Yeah, so I think the, the first one was to just try to figure out what really we should label TSW and what we shouldn't. Because if you go online, there's a lot of patient back and forth, but not a lot of provider. Um, so the study design started with taking data from a previous survey and kind of extracting which answers to which questions best separated people who had atopic derm and who denied having TSW versus people who said, yes, I think I have TSW. So kind of deriving these kind of diagnostic criteria and then taking that criteria and using it to enroll kind of a pilot study worth of individuals to start looking for biomarkers or things that would be different between somebody who um, has TSW and has symptoms consistent with kind of the overall uh, case reports of TSW versus somebody who has what I guess you just term regular eczema, you know, the more common versions. And with that, then um, all different kinds of bioassays in the skin and the blood um, and microbiome, just to try to establish what was different. Yeah, the biggest one is that um, unlike regular atopic derm, uh, there's a mitochondrial defect in patients with topical steroid withdrawal. Um, an upregulation of one of the components of the electron transport chain um, basically gets revved up and for reasons we do not understand, will not turn off um, for those patients. And so with this overactivity, it starts producing too much niacin in the skin, which I think most of us are familiar with from causing flushing um, uh, when it used to be used for blood pressure or uh, for uh, cholesterol, excuse me. Um, and then in, in order for the body to recycle niacin, it has to break down tryptophan. And so in the breaking down of tryptophan and the overactivity of niacin, those two things combined we think would explain um, all of the symptoms that are distinct from regular eczema. Yeah, I, I mean, it you know depends who you'd ask, but I'd say the, the patient groups feel pretty strongly that the overwhelming majority of providers are very dismissive of it to say, well, it's not really a, a real disease or you just have severe eczema. Um, I think what it helps is establish that there are plenty of people out there who have severe atopic derm who do not have this disorder or who would not meet those criteria, um, but there are some that do. And they'll, the, the TSW is in addition to most of, the, not most, but not all of our patients were on topical steroids because of eczema. And the TSW doesn't make the eczema go away, so they'll, they'll have both. Um, but I think what this helps is to identify, all right, who is it that you really think is TSW? It's a distinct entity. It should be respected as such. Um, we did do pilot studies with um, uh, interventions, uh, metformin, and then quote-unquote herbal metformin, um, which is berberine. Um, yeah, they're promising. Again, the end, the end number is small, um, but I think the important thing is to establish it as a real diagnosis and kind of give some people um, basic outlines of how would you go about separating who in your clinic has TSW versus who in your clinic probably is simply um, severe eczema. Because right now somebody comes into their clinic and says, well, I think I have TSW. You know, even if the dermatologist is semi-aware and they're going online, they're going to get 7,000 different stories of what that would mean and how that would look. And so now I think we have a much better sense of being able to say like, okay, well, let, let's fill this out together. And then when you click it, you're like, yeah, you, you, you might actually have it. And here are some other options. Um, and then ideally, um, people with uh, other research capacities could then start doing clinical trials to see um, what other interventions there are. Yeah, I, I think um, I think a lot of the pushback from probably your private practice, you know, would have got corner store dermatologists, if you want to say that, and I'm an allergist, um, so allergy gets lumped in there and pediatricians. It's just a lot of them are like, well, what am, how am I supposed to recognize this? Like, what, is, what, is, what does this even mean when somebody comes in and they, they say they have this? So I think just working on saying, all right, let's sit down together and go through some of these symptoms and see whether you, qual whether you would be in the level of suspicion for it. Um, I think it, it should hopefully be open-minded and hopefully from the patient standpoint will help them to appreciate that most dermatologists were not trained in this. They're not given diagnostic criteria. So the fact that maybe they didn't recognize it is not necessarily malice, you know, or, or just, you know, an ignorance in a, in a hole in education. Um, so I think just kind of saying like, all right, fine. Now that we 
have a better sense of what this is. Let's go out there and 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 tackle it together and start, um, you know, research or case reports even um, at this stage. I think so. I think you know the there were several things about TSW that did overlap with significant with serious atopic derm. So the, the microbiomes were very similar. The the skin metabolism, other than niacin, is very similar. Um, so I think that there's an implication for um, the potentially for the mitochondria. Although my, mitochondria has been looked at extensively for regular atopic derm, but it, just in terms of you know abnormalities in the mitochondria in the cholinergic um, pathway. Um, would generate these kinds of symptoms. And so I think there's um, some implications there um, and implications for prevention in terms of being more judicious with your steroids. I know the official line is, you know, only use it for a little bit and then transfer over, but maybe being a little bit more aggressive um, for that. 